Hey, what's up guys? This is Sam, and I'll be doing the free video for July 30th, 2021. So I just finished making the premium video for the folks in the Options Gold Room, and uh, every Friday for the premium video we take kind of a trip around the world. We look at all the American indices, we look at world markets, we look at currencies, commodities, bonds, the different sectors, and we try to get a picture of you know the way that the market looks going into next week. This was actually one of the more neutral. Um, views that I think we've put together um, in, in, in some time. We typically have had a, a you know a directional bias coming out of those but uh, coming into next week at least for myself the markets are still structured right if you look at the indices, the SPY, uh, the DIA, the QQQ um, the only one that's maybe lacking a little bit of structure is going to be the IWM small caps um, but by and large everything's relatively structured the dollar looks like it could go lower which would be generally bullish um, but there are a couple of issues. There was just some issues in terms of momentum. So what I mean by structure is just, you know, you have your moving averages and whatever ones you use, they are correctly uh, positioned. So I use the 821.50-200 and everything's still structured correctly, right? You can see it here pretty clearly. You can see it over here on the weekly pretty clearly as well. So everything still has uh, that upward structure. There's no particular reason to doubt it um, other than um, just a couple of warning signs that I'm seeing and I'll show you the main one and honestly this is showing up everywhere uh, I'll show it to you on SPY but it's it's evident uh, on the queues it's evident on SPY it's evident pretty much in every sector and it's this move into this higher high right so you see how you made a higher high there on SPY representing the entire market but then you see how this indicator down here it had a high here and then for the secondary higher high on price, it actually made a lower high. Honestly, this indicator here did it as well, but the one that really matters is the lower indicator. And uh, that is a pretty major divergence. Um, you don't want to make new highs with lower momentum than previous highs because that makes those new highs a little bit more suspect and a little bit more likely to chop around. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, yes, the markets still do have structure going into next week, but from everything that I saw, the momentum is not correct, with the potential that it could actually roll. Um, again, you just weigh that accordingly because the structure is correct, and that is point one. Point two is that next week uh, will kick off the start of August. Now, August through September is typically the most two, uh, typically the two most bearish months of the year. Right, so you passed FANG earnings. Um, you don't particularly have a catalyst coming up that I see that's positive. Uh, and while you do have structure on the indices, your momentum profile is not correct. And you're going into the next uh, 60 days is the most typically the most bearish 60 days of the year. So lots of things to keep in our mind um, so understand that going into next week um, nothing's too extended right there is a lot of room here on the indices uh, to go to ATR or whatever but the momentum is not correct in my opinion and I think it would be prudent to maybe give it about half a day on Monday before deciding what you want to do so let me show you a couple things here that I did see that were lined up relatively well uh, some of which won't care if the market goes up and then some will uh, that will need the market to go up. Uh, the first of which is going to be bonds. Um, so TLT here, in my opinion, is starting to set up. Uh, it's been setting up. We've had a signal on this pretty much since April 1st, and it really has only developed further and further. You can see the 200 here, and now you're getting your moving averages to cross through the 200, which is generally a pretty good sign. And the fact that it's holding the 8 is also a pretty good sign as well. So in doing so, you now have, and you, you really can't see it here on TLT, I would advise that you look at this on ZB, which is a 30 year, which is what moves this product. But on, on ZB, the futures contract, you have really, really, really solid setups. Here, you have kind of a slingshot setup where it's going negative, not triggering, and then can have that slingshot to the upside, and your trend structure is still correct here. So I think bonds can work in an up market. I think bonds can work in a down market. So keep them in your back pocket for next week. As long as they hold above 148.5, uh, I think uh, they will continue to go higher. Um, opposite of bonds, let's say you don't like the bond idea. You're like, nope, that's not going to happen. Bonds are going lower. Cool. Well, 
if you could guarantee me that, then I would buy Goldman Sachs here. So Goldman here, in my opinion, one of the better looking financials in the space. Coming off of this kind of double bottom with a higher low, a little bit of a flat top there, right? So the potential that you could try to break out here above 380 and kind of get back to the highs is definitely there. Um, this one wouldn't like it if bonds went up. It wouldn't be as attractive. So if bonds do come down, it makes Goldman very attractive. But just the pattern on itself is pretty darn good. Um, nice little uh, you know double bottom like we pointed out. Daily squeeze, low compression weekly squeeze. Bounced off the weekly 21. Closed back above the weekly 8 kind of doing all the things it needs to do. And it did this in the face of bonds going up, which typically financials don't like. So that's actually incredibly strong. Next up is SMH. This is going to be the semiconductors. Uh, one of the better setups in the market. Um, I think you can trade the semis in general, like AMAT looks good. Um, off the top of my head, that's probably the one I would trade. Maybe Texas Instruments, but I think AMAT for me would be the, the trade. However, I, I looked at all the semis and uh, none that I saw looked better than SMH, which is just basically betting on the field. So you can either bet on a horse like NVIDIA, or you can bet on the field, SMH. To me, the field looked the best, and I don't have to take any stock-specific risk. So I like the SMH setup here. It's completely structured, uh, has a daily squeeze pointing up. It's, above, it's near an all-time high, so it doesn't have that problem of resistance. And it has that weekly squeeze that it's been trying to break out from. So good volume uh, this week, and I think semis are a definite place to focus if the market uh, cooperates. So as long as the market doesn't fall apart, I think SMH is going to be a great play. I'll be looking to play that um, next week, either directly through SMH, more than likely, or through AMAT, but based on what I'm seeing, more than likely SMH. And then lastly, uh, tried and true favorite here. Um, solar, I think, has a long way to go. Um, I think we all kind of know this instinctively, that this is kind of where the world is heading. Uh, the higher oil prices will help us get there. I think if you can pick up an EMPH here around 183, it's a buy, frankly, um, because that is a breakout point. Very nice slingshot looking setup here. You see how this indicator came down to the middle and held, kind of did a little double bottom there in, at the middle? That's great. That's fantastic. And then really the meat and potatoes of this setup is the fact that you have weekly trend. You had an increase in weekly volume as you broke out above the 618. You have an active buy signal and active trend signals. So for me, it's solar just basically comes down to EMPH. Looks great to me. I think this is a great looking chart. I think anywhere between 183 to about 180 is a total slam dunk buy, and you like to push this into new highs. If you're the type of person that likes to sit in a trade, um, maybe not an options trade in this particular instance, maybe like a long-term spread or a long-term butterfly or even long-term stock, I like this stock a lot. I think uh, this one makes a lot of sense for the next... It makes sense as a trade, it makes sense for next week, and it makes sense a year from now. So I like it for traders, and I like it for investors, regardless of what you... Uh, what group you uh, you find yourself in. So I'll go ahead and cut it off there, guys. Just wanted to kind of give you a snapshot of what we're seeing going into next week. The indices, everything big picture looked a little bit neutral to me, which is kind of rare that we could look at everything and it's a little bit neutral. So we'll just kind of sit on that view and then understand that uh, going into next month, it typically is the two most bearish months of the year. Um, and uh, in the event that the indices do start to hold, continue to be strength, uh, strong, then uh, I definitely would want to check out SMH, EMPH, and, uh, and Goldman. In the events that the indices don't stay strong, then I think bonds are going to continue to work, and that can be played through TLT. All right, guys. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for checking out our, our uh, YouTube page. Before you leave the page and you go somewhere else on YouTube and watch a cat video or a dog video, uh, do leave us a like, leave us a dislike, doesn't matter. Just uh, engage with us in some way so that the algorithm knows that you like us or don't like us, but uh, it'll recommend us to you either way. Um, and if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and subscribe to us as well so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that are going to be coming out. And as always, it's fun to talk to you guys. Feel free to uh, stop by simplertrading.com, check out the room, uh, check out a trial, and see what we're all about. We'd like to have you there. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Cheers. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me 